there back in the place. Yeah. I prefer the light bikes. Yeah. Yeah. These old retro ones. It's fast and fair. What's that? It's class. Yeah, I like this. It's easy to work on it. Yeah. How do you know how the S works? Yeah, hey, everyone knows who you are. Just me. I saw you yesterday when you were waiting outside the tent. Oh yeah. You guys know that? Let's get into the video how the pros train and by pro I mean world tour pro tour you know the top of the top of cycling men's and women's road cycling okay jump on the back here of team Arkea we're here in Adelaide Australia this is filmed this week January 2024 Andrew Tidswell on the left there he's only 17 look how he sits on the bike he sits on the bike like an experienced rider. Um, and he's got a Duranata special there. It's a Falcos. Oh, Falcos. It's a Focus Izalco uh, with SRAM Red. Mechanical. About 6.8 kilo. $1,300 Aussie. Off Gumtree. Gumtree deal. Duranata spec. Uh, we're riding along here's Northeast Road. Heading out towards, uh, uh, towards Gorge Road direction. There's Hugh there on the back far left. And this is the Arkea crew. French, mostly in the team, as also Miles Scotson, a local boy, Adelaide representation, men's road race championship Australia, 2017 was it? Holding the national jersey. So you see that the riders, they're drinking and eating, you know, constantly just dripping in the sugar, dripping in the water. All right. I've been riding with these, again, with these, 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 uh, these roads with these world tour teams, these pro riders since 2003. Okay. I, I, when I say riding with them, I mean like, you know, doing 200 K rides sometimes going into Victor Harbor back with them, doing swap offs in the flat, doing course recon, be even being asked to ride on the front and, and pull turns on the front, you know, um, just all sorts, you know, give, getting given jerseys and bottles and food and, asking for me, me them asking for directions etc so i've been you know a fly on the wall here's a simon clark on the just, just zooming zooming up norton summit this was actually quite uh quite fast very very fast and i'm on the i had said the show people wasn't on an e-bike it's on the bmc astana bro and uh simon clark there he's one of the best road cyclists out there in the peloton yeah, he's the guy, if he win the World Championships, you wouldn't be surprised, okay? He's like the dark horse. There's always, always a factor in any one-day race. And even in a stage race for stages. Uh, anyway, so back to a start here. So you see that there's differences in the training. There'll be easy days and there'll be hard days. That's what I noticed with the pro riders is there's a big difference. There's like a polarity, like a big bipolar swing of going really easy and going really hard and if you can't go really easy it's not possible to go really hard because it takes self-control and control of the ego to be able to let slow riders pass you you know and not respond when you when you're going to do an easy session and it also takes ego control to be able to push your maximum watts when your body's like, oh, no, I don't want to do this, you know, when, you, when your ego is saying, I don't want to do this, where you ignore your ego, okay, so the ability to ignore our ego, our little chipmunk voice, our little monkey voice that's telling us BS, the ability to ignore that, that is definitely a key factor in uh, getting your best results in anything in life, not just cycling, but anything, anything in life, having that awareness out thought, having your goal, and just getting it fucking done. Top Norton Summit here. And so you see the riders on the, on the right, on the left. You can see riders just, you know, stopping for a nature break, okay? Better than flushing down the toilet. Just, you know, I was using 20 litres of water. Save the Murray. Hashtag save the Murray. Be on a bush. So you see them, you know, every hour, it feels like every two hours, they're, psst, 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 you know, cyclists are, you know, hydrating the bushes as nature intended. And so that's what I noticed. They're just always in the water. They're always in the sugar. You see them nibbling here, a bit of gels here, a bit of sugar water. 
you know, the biddens generally have water in one and sugar water in the other, a sugar solution, refined sugar solution, whether it's table sugar or dextrose or fructose, sucrose, glucose powders, maltodextrins, you know, they're taking in these refined simple sugars so they can keep the muscles working and keep the glycogen going so they can keep, you know, the red blood cells in abundant supply. Because if, if you run out of sugar, if you run out of sugar, your red blood cells die off rapidly. Okay, your red blood cells live on sugar, people. So you need to make sure you get enough sugar, so your red blood cells can uh, always be sufficient. And that's what I mean. Like, I'm I'm 46, man. I'm 46. I haven't been trained much last few years because of a, a neck injury. Is what it is. All good. And I'm out here riding with the, the fastest riders on earth. Obviously, we're not going full race pace. I and mean, I wouldn't mind that either because that'd be some good uh, some good footage. But the the footage with Simon Clark before that was. I would, I would consider that a race post. So, you know, like it's just, it's, that's the importance of getting enough carbohydrate. And you see my, see my face, I'm not, I'm not under any sort of labor effort. That just goes to show you that my protocols work. And that's why World Tour riders come to me asking for tips and hints. And even, and their coaches as well. And their nutritionists as well. They're watching my stuff. And it feels great. Right? That's not about me being arrogant and big noting myself. That's just helping you out there, the viewer, have confidence in what I'm saying. All right. Have confidence in what I'm saying. You know, like you ha I have the, the world's best female and male cyclists asking me and or watching my content for hips and tips and hints. Almost said hips and tits, but uh, for tips and hints. Twitter and under. Uh, it's the best race in the world to watch as a spectator. And the riders love it as well because the format is the same hotel for two weeks, basically. The riders get here for a week beforehand, and they stay a week during the race. Yeah, so it's basically two weeks in the same hotel. If they can just get this wicked routine down, and they love it, you know. And then the stage transfers are quite minimal. Often the riders will ride back from the stage to the same hotel. All right, there's no like packing your room up and jumping around different hotel, hotel like in the Tour de France, etc. It's just it's just easy for the staff. I mean, the hardest part, I guess, is flying to Australia. <laughs> You know, I can't just drive from Belgium down to us to France, but uh, it's yeah, it's just a great format. The spectators love it, the riders love it. The weather's normally pretty good. It's you know, it can get pretty hot, but generally it's pretty chill. You know, it's pretty like chill as in relaxed chill, and uh, not baromic chill. And the Savelle, the I got to be, a, you know, this is this is where you know, I, I'm not as, I'm not pitching tents for these bikes. I'll, I'll tell you that, I'm not pitching tents for the bikes. The colours are cool, but I'm like, man, bring back the rim brake. Ineos here, aka Team Sky. We've been filming with them for a long time, haven't we? Remember the uh, the Richie Port and the uh, Chris Froome videos back in was it 2014, 2015? Yeah, actually 2014 or 2013 even. Team Sky. I think I think the first time Team Sky came to TDU, I think it was 2010. And I think uh, I think Froome was with them that year. Or was it 2011? One of those years. Froome was Froome came out. I'm pretty sure his Froome's doing the the bunch rides, <laughs> the local bunch rides. Swap, swapping off, getting the K's in. Uh, that's, the, that's the dedication that uh, guys like Chris Froome have, just getting it done. The stuff you don't see on TV. Okay. But yeah, you can also see the... Another, this, his, look at this right in front, in far, far front. That is uh, pretty sure that's Ben Swift. And he's out the saddle pushing a hard gear. Why does that happen? And you've got the rider behind, uh, Navarez. He from uh, is Ecuador. He is spinning a light gear. What's the deal? personal preference you know you, you'll see the riders self spin and they'll grind often when you're growing now Ben soon spinning okay so often when you get out the saddle in a hard gear you're just sort of giving your bum a bit of it like your ass the, the, the chafing or the contact points or your gooch you're just giving that skin area a bit of a break also it can help you warm up the body because you're out the saddle you're using your upper body you're using your lats your intercostal muscles are going to get hit from a different angle you know, you're pushing in a harder gear, using body weight to push the torque over the pedals, and so it just helps activate more muscles and just gets you, just gets you more warmed up. Okay, it gets you more warmed up. So I definitely find I do this as well. And it's very, here we go. Look at this right here. He's, you know, just out the side just for a few seconds. It's just a great way to alleviate saddle pressure, if anything. Okay, so learning how to ride out the saddle. Learning how to ride that. Learning. How, sorry. Not enough nullable watch today. Learning how to ride out the saddle is a key skill to every cyclist should learn. Okay. And the best way to learn it is upper climb. Okay. 
put it in a hard gear, you're not pushing down heaps of power, you're not sprinting out the saddle, you're just clicking it up a few harder gears or chuck it in the big ring and then get out the saddle and just sort of rock the bike left to right and you sort of pendulum, you swing the bike between your legs, left, right, left, right, okay? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, we're filming this video, this video was filmed on a GoPro 10 and also a GoPro 7. This is the GoPro 10. It's, it's a little bit crisp. It's a pretty amazing footage. I feel very, very grateful, very, very blessed. You know, you people like Harley get some footage, the world's best riders on your local roads. I'm like, okay, let's go slap a GoPro in my hand. And then here we are. We're on, we're on the road. And I'm on the giant TCR, TCR on say, to a nine-speed Durace, getting it done. I can't believe how good the bikes are from 20 years ago. They're still very, 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 very good today. This is the first time, uh, actually, this is the first time, well, I'm riding a lighter bike than the World Tour riders. But I wish I was fast, as fast as them. <laughs> I need I need every advantage I can get. Okay, so the reason why I ride, su ride such a light bike is uh, I need every advantage I can get when I'm riding with these World Tour riders who are, you know, universes, uh, faster than me. Great Adelaide, man. Adelaide is an amazing city. Adelaide is the best city in the world to live. And this is one reason why.